Hey all, welcome to another Valley Forged, a brand new channel with just about lasers. And uh, wow, I'm at 99 subscribers. So by the time you watch this, maybe it will hit 100. Well, the channel's uh, less than a month old, just a few videos on there doing really well. Thank you, everybody. Um, I love lasers. And uh, I've been using lasers for quite a while and recently got into diode lasers. And it was a new animal. And there's just new materials that you can use. And I thought it would be important to kind of go over some of those materials so that you don't get stuck using the same old things. Now, it, it really depends on the wattage of your diode laser. The newer ones, the, the 10 and the 20 watt, are just really capable of doing quite a bit more. When it comes to doing engraving, they're all going to do a fantastic job. But what happens when you want to start cutting and making projects, which really opens up the door for so many more things? Well, you're probably going to want the 10 or 20 watt, like I said, at least for a diode laser. So what are your best materials? What can you use? The industry kind of pushes some materials that really aren't great. Uh, you see a lot of things they're pushing like these thin metals and whatnot, and then you try to use them and they bend or they don't work the way that they said. And frankly, if you're going to be doing metal, just you, this is probably not going to be the laser for you. But there are plenty of things that you can do with all of the materials available. So I'm going to jump outside and show you the different kinds of things that I typically use. So there's a lot of different materials that you can use, but some are just better than others. And from what I've found uh, using diode lasers especially, because they're better at doing some things, especially engraving, than uh, CO2 lasers. I mean, the, the engravings come out fantastic, but maybe not quite so good at things like acrylic or cutting. So you do have to come up with some different uh, thoughts when it comes to it. So you're going to be cutting probably thinner woods when it comes to a diode laser. So what you want to be able to do is make layers, right? So if you have something like this, which uh, I have recently, I told you in another video that I really needed to be able to cut this out because it's so much cheaper than wood and it actually paints much better and has a nice heft to it. So when you put it with uh, something to make, say, a coaster, it gives it that thickness, it gives it that weight, and it just, it, it lies flat. Um, it's just, it just adds a lot to what you want to do uh, for a lot of things. Uh, you know, I made this wallet, of course, leather, my first leather project on, on the diode laser. Cuts it great, I had no problems with it whatsoever. It does very well with leather, in my opinion, even better than a CO2 in many ways. Uh, cleaner. Uh, foam is an excellent thing to use. And uh, paper. So cardstock of all different kinds. You know, I used all the different cardstocks and foam to make different things. Uh, then we'll take a look over here. You can see now here's uh, three layers, right? It's like uh, you've got the wood layer and then behind it you know you're looking at this thing and that's tape now of course it's not going to be that way but you can see it just paints real well and then you just glue it together and this is what you've got so it just makes things much cheaper to do it that way those would be the basic materials I think work the best what materials do you like? All right, so there's plenty more materials than that that are possible. But I think these are the main ones. Uh, I didn't mention much about acrylic. And yes, you could do dark acrylic. You could engrave on some acrylics. But really, it's not something you could do across the board or anything very thick. Of course, you can use it. I just don't feel like a diode laser is a good specialty for using acrylic. And really, if acrylic is your thing and you want to make smaller projects, maybe a K40 or a small CO2 laser is, is really more your thing. 
Maybe you can have a K40 on the side and use your uh, diode laser for the wood. You know, there are plenty of ways to go with this. I think you could probably get both of those lasers for far cheaper than one, you know, decent CO2 and kind of have the best of both worlds. Uh, as you can see, I have the extension kit on, it, which opens up a lot more possibilities for me. And this is partially why I really like being able to use this MDF. Now, you do need to use more cuts with it. And I think this is kind of what I've learned. At first, I tried to cut it in one or two passes, and it really just wasn't working well at all. Switching over to diode lasers, I've had to learn to embrace the multiple cut thing. You know, maybe a little bit higher speed, but then more cuts. And I think I would encourage you to try and work on that with some some materials, especially the MDF, but in some woods as well. That doing say 400 speed at 90 percent power four times might be better than trying to do it at 100 percent power at 100 speed, right? And it's just going to look a lot better. It's going to cut a lot cleaner. I am amazed by how much cleaner a, a cuts that I get when I use these multiple passes. Now, that's not going to be necessary when you do things like foam or paper, of course. And another thing I really like about the MDF, and I mentioned it earlier, is just how flat it usually is. And that's very helpful when you're working with thin pieces of wood. A lot of times, the thin pieces of wood will warp over time, especially if you paint them or if you put on some sort of covering, so that when you vise it down to a piece of MDF, you can recover that flatness. I've found this over and over again. And also, as I mentioned, being able to paint the MDF and you could, you know, do multiple colors by masking the MDF off. And then, uh, you know, after engraving, you can paint it and then rip off the rest of the masking. You know, a lot of people will show you how to do this. I think it's a really great way to use a diode laser. So, of course, there are tons, tons more ways. In fact, leave in the description. Let me know, like, what am I missing here? What are the other things that you use that I'm not talking about? And recently, I did talk about leather. You can see a laser engraving for cutting leather. I really, really think the diode is fantastic for this. And I'm going to be doing a lot more with that. I'm going to be doing a lot more, period. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing a lot more laser products and doing a lot more projects. So go ahead and leave a note in the description of what you want to see. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.